Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Tuesday morning, December 27th. The Arctic blast that invaded the U.S. over the uh, past several days from northwest to southeast is continuing to modify this morning, early Tuesday morning here, December 27th. It continues to retreat slowly to the north and milder increasingly moist Pacific Ocean air is working its way across the nation from west to east. It will reach the eastern part of the nation by later this week into the upcoming week and by the time we get to Friday afternoon high temperatures in DC, Philadelphia, New York City should be at or slightly above 50 degrees and then well up in the 50s this upcoming week and maybe even some spots hitting the 60 degree mark uh, uh, <clears throat> this weekend Saturday Sunday, New Year's Day. Unfortunately, that warm-up over the weekend will come with some showers in the eastern U.S. as well. In terms of that Arctic blast, boy, it made some, certainly was a newsworthy event. There were all kinds of records or near records set across the nation in pa during the past several days. Uh, some of the highlights of that Arctic blast, first of all, uh, records actually reached an all-time low temperature mark in uh, Wyoming. I believe it was Laramie, Wyoming dropped down to 42 degrees below zero, their coldest temperature ever. Of course, Buffalo got walloped again with uh, uh, incredible snowfall amounts. And many areas in the eastern part of the nation experienced the coldest Christmas Eve ever. That uh, specifically refers to the lowest maximum temperature for the day, December 24th, which was Saturday. Many parts, for example, in the I-95 corridor region on Saturday did not get above 14, 15 degrees for highs, the coldest uh, maximum temperature, the lowest maximum temperature for that particular date of December 24th. And in many areas, the combination of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, Saturday and Sunday, coldest in uh, more than 30 years in many parts of the eastern U.S. Now going forward, a lot of computer forecast models have it getting warmer than normal in the eastern half of the nation, not only later this week, but really well into the month of January. I don't think if I, I don't think I believe that. I think there are reasons to believe cold air masses will be able to make their way back into the central and eastern U.S. as early as later next week and certainly going into the second week of January. One of the things we like to look at this time of the year, temperature pattern and the stratosphere way up at the top of the atmosphere. This is, <coughs> excuse me, the a look at the temperatures at 10 millibars stratosphere. What we're looking at, kind of a top-down view, the current temperature pattern right here, that little circle right there represents the North Pole. The U.S. is down here. The other side of the pole, Siberian side of the pole over here. Right now, this is the temperature analysis at 10 millibars, uh, the stratospheric level. We have a rather typical looking pattern right now with what is known as the polar vortex, a cold polar vortex sitting right on top of the North Pole. A little bit of higher heights than normal right now over the eastern part of the U.S., the southeastern part of the nation. But for the most part, we have a relatively normal looking pattern here at the uh, polar region. Now, let's go out 15 days out. This is kind of a long-range forecast map from the GFS, but look at what happens here by the time we go 15 days out. We're into the second week of January. That polar vortex, again, the North Pole, right in this region right here where that circle is, the polar vortex kind of shifts a little bit and it stretches and when you see a stretching polar vortex this time of the year with some of that over the central and eastern u.s that allows for the possibility of cold air masses to make their way from the higher latitudes into the middle latitudes again this is 15 days out uh, a stratospheric warming event here on this part of the polar region uh, the this part of the stratosphere again this is a big change from what we're seeing right now to 15 days out. This argues for some cold air masses being way, being able to make their way back into the central and eastern U.S. at least as we get into the second week of January. Well, let's take a, a, a more of a near-term look here. What we're looking at is the total precipitation amounts as depicted 
by NOAA's Weather Prediction Center for the next seven days. Really two areas I want to point out. First of all, a lot of moisture showing up here in, in terms of rainfall over the next seven days. The lower Mississippi Valley, the Tennessee Valley, we'll see a big uh, pattern change so that there's a, a pretty constant influx of moist Gulf of Mexico air into the lower Mississippi Valley, into the Tennessee Valley. That will not only lead to a lot of rainfall over the next seven days, but also we'll have to watch for the possibility of some severe weather outbreaks over the next five to ten days or so in, in this part of the nation. Again, we'll have a lot of mild, moist air and a very stormy pattern. Look at what's going on over the next seven days along the West Coast and especially into California. There'll be storm after storm hitting California over the next let's say 10 to 14 days or so. The next couple of weeks, very stormy pattern. A lot of snowfall in the higher elevations right here of eastern California, the Sierra Nevada. They'll certainly receive several feet of snow over the next 5, 10, 15 days or so. Again, Pacific storm after Pacific storm working their way from the ocean into the western part of the nation. California gets a ton of rainfall, the lower elevations, a ton of snowfall over the next couple of weeks. So really two highlight areas here are going forward over the next week to 10 days or so. Well, let's now take a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly pattern from the operational run of the GFS, a zero Z run here. We're looking right off the bat here on Tuesday morning, upper level O still situated over the southeast U.S. and a lot of Arctic air still remains, although it is modifying for sure over the eastern third of the nation. And here's storm number one about to slam into the west coast looking upstream other storms in fact will slam into the west coast over the next several days again a stormy pattern coming for california here over the next couple of weeks let's move forward here some of those higher heights a higher uh, uh the the high pressure ridging slides over the great lakes by midweek this is tomorrow afternoon forecast map and we continue to get milder in the eastern third of the nation meanwhile a lot of rain on the lower elevation in California, a lot of snow on the higher elevations of Sierra Nevada and ultimately into the Rocky Mountains in the interior western U.S. We'll just keep moving forward here. Look at this ridge intensifying here over the northeast U.S. Again, temperatures maybe 50 degrees, 50 plus degrees by Friday afternoon in D.C., Philly, New York City, and uh, a storm, stormy pattern. Just look at upstream Upper level low here, upper level low here, south of the Aleutian Islands, and yet another one farther to the west, uh, uh, pouncing on the west coast of uh, the U.S. There's another storm system by the latter part of the upcoming week, and this is Sunday morning, New Year's Day. I know there's a Rose Bowl game, Penn State in Utah. Uh, that's actually on Monday, come to think of it, on January 2nd, but still a stormy looking pattern here going forward. Still remaining on the mild side in the eastern part of the nation. Now, this is a week from right now going into next Tuesday. Still a lot of ridging over the northeastern part of the nation and upper level lows and troughs uh, across the western U.S. and still over the Pacific Ocean. But notice the ridging starting to build back to the west over the central part of Canada. We go in, uh, into the latter part of next week. And some ridging showing up here the central part of Canada and at the same time deep upper level low really sliding far to the south. This is not a mild looking uh, upper level pattern here by the time we get to later next week. At least not in my opinion here. We go even farther into time. Latter part of next week we're looking about a week and a half away now. Next Friday, January 6th. Again, a lot of ridging showing up not only over the northeast uh, U.S., southeastern part of Canada, but this is the uh, important part here, showing up over the central part of Canada at the same time, upper level lows sliding way down to the south. This tells me that there can be uh, very interesting weather here perhaps by the time we get uh, into the uh, second weekend in January here. This is now Sunday, January 8th. Look at this, high pressure ridging kind of over top across eastern Canada deep upper level low situated right back over the eastern U.S. So kind of an interesting weather pattern shaping up as early as late next week going into the second week of January. 
Well, let's now wrap up with the surface forecast maps, again using the operational run of the GFS from zero Z. A lot of precipitation out in the uh, western part of the nation, and that's in the form of snow over those higher elevations of eastern California, the Sierra Nevada. Heavy, heavy rain uh, over the uh, lower, the coastal areas of northern California, all the way into Washington and Oregon. A lot of dry weather here as we begin the day on Tuesday, uh, December 27th, in the eastern half of the nation. But then by the time we get to tomorrow, Look at the isobar pattern right here across the Mississippi Valley region. Whenever you see high pressure situated right here in a, a tight isobar pattern, that represents a warm-up. You have winds that flow clockwise around highs in this fashion. On the back side of that high, you have a low-level fetch of air out way down from the deep uh, south across the Mississippi and into the uh, Great Lakes region. This is a much milder weather pattern shaping up by the time we get to the middle and latter part of the week and let's keep moving forward by the time we get into the latter part of the week now this is all the way into friday morning a lot of that milder air makes its way into the U eastern u.s but a lot of moisture associated with gulf of mexico air flowing up into the mississippi valley and look at this another strong storm hits the western uh, coast of the U.S. Look at a 988 low slamming into west coast of Washington. Rain sliding all the way down to the uh, California coastline, the central California coastline. This is this Friday. Keep moving forward here. Some of this moisture in the uh, south central U.S. makes its way into the eastern states during the weekend. Saturday and Sunday, a threat of showers, although mild. D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. Look at all the snowfall here uh, by uh, over the weekend in Sierra Nevada, several feet of snow, no doubt, with that next storm system. We'll keep moving forward here. That uh, storm system will produce some snowfall in the interior western U.S. in the higher elevation, Rocky Mountains. Uh, and then we go forward into a week from now, into next Tuesday. Again, we talked about we'll have to watch out for possible severe weather outbreaks. This is a week away from today, next Tuesday, January 3rd. A lot of ingredients with colder air in the north central states, very, very mild and moist air flowing from the south to the north across the Mississippi Valley. Watch out for the possibility of severe weather a week from now. Yet another system slides into California, and here we go. We have uh, uh, rain across the low lying areas of California, and then some snow over the Rocky Mountains. We'll go a little farther out in time. And here we go by the latter part of next week. We have some cold air just sitting there just to the north and west over the Great Lakes. This is a week and a half away now next Friday. And a storm system that uh, started off with the Pacific Ocean slides all the way down to the deep south. And the combination of some cold air to the north and a lot of moisture way down into the south makes for kind of an interesting weather pattern. By the time we get to the end of next week, go out a little bit farther in time. And again, this is uh, in the speculation phase. But by the end of next week, we could have some interesting weather again back in the uh, eastern part of the nation, the central part of the nation. Again, a lot of computer forecast models have it getting and staying mild in the eastern part of the nation well into the month of January. I don't buy into that pattern. It looks like. By the time we get to the latter part of next week, certainly into the second week of January, things are happening across the stratosphere and across uh, the Pacific Ocean that will allow for, I believe, more cold air masses to make their way into the central and eastern U.S. Again, late next week, second week of January. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.